In 1996, journalist Sidney Blumenthal and historian James Chase coined the phrase the indispensable nation to describe America's post-Cold War role. They passed it on to Madeleine Albright, who used it regularly during her tenure as Secretary of State. Did the term accurately describe America's place in the world order? And even if it was true then, is it still true today? That's the focus of this edition of Rewind. Let's start with the topic, uh, is the United States, States still the indispensable nation? You coined that phrase, many people use it. I've amended your phrase, and I want to see what you think of my amendment. I've said the United States is still the indispensable partner. My point being that there's much less we can do alone in this world and much more we can do partnering with others. You have made it clearer, but it was always part of what indispensable nation meant. And let me just say, President Clinton said it first. It's just that I said it so often that it became identified with me. There's nothing in the definition of indispensable that says alone. It means that we have to be engaged. And so it always had that context of partnership and operating with others. Um, the problem is that I think that um, finding the right partners. Who do you do it with? And that is the part that is getting more complicated. Yesterday, uh, President uh, Obama had a meeting at Camp David with uh, the leaders of, of many of the GCC countries, except only two of them showed, and others had other representatives. Obviously, he's trying to build a partnership with the GCC and, try, and trying to generate more support for the initiative he and the P5 are taking with Iran. Uh, but that is, is that partnership effort going okay? I mean, why did some people not show? What's your assessment of how we're doing building partnerships? My sense is actually that the meeting went pretty well. Um, I think it is very hard to read other leaders' minds and uh, why they did or didn't come. There was kind of a snotty thing in the newspapers which said it's that the Camp David wasn't <laughs> fancy enough uh, for them. Basically, I do think that it went well, but it is a perfect example of uh, what you asked me initially. The United States does not want to run the Middle East. There have been questions about what happened after World War II, who's the guarantor, did we take the place of the British, a number of different questions. There's no, que there's no question that we don't want to run it. So the question is how and who are the partners. And there is this kind of um, minuet going on at the moment, trying to figure out what the partnership means, what do they want, uh, how do you get the other countries to work with each other, uh, what are our agendas, but that is why we all know that partnerships are more complicated than going around and telling everybody what to do. It's a year later, uh, we understand the Russians have been meddling in the East, but how do you assess Poroshenko's pro progress? I'm very worried about everything. I, I uh, um, I used to be known as a Soviet expert, uh, and I sometimes look at my library and I thought, Ar well, archaeology. It's not archaeology. Um, <laughs> and I think Putin's behavior is unacceptable, and we can spend time on that. On the other hand, I do think it's also important to deal with the Russians, so I'm glad that uh, Secretary Kerry went there, that it is possible for us to look at areas where we can cooperate. NATO expansion. Your own history is as a refugee from uh, what was then Czechoslovakia. And I remember, because I was in Congress in the 90s, that you were the strongest voice for NATO expansion. Uh, a guy named uh, George Kennan, who, uh, whose family named our Russia Institute here, the Kennan, Kennan Institute, uh, and some others like him thought NATO expansion was a bad idea at the time. Uh, looking back on it and looking at it now, uh, how do you how do you assess it? I hate to say that George Kennan was wrong. He was wrong. I personally went to talk to Yeltsin about this, and I said, this is not against you. Uh, and at some point, you can become members right. if you want to be. The problem that we're having has nothing to do with the expansion of NATO. The problem that we're having is the fact that the Russians are going through an identity crisis. Putin has plugged into that identity crisis. And he, I think, needs enemies. And so he has decided that NATO and all the things that are not really his enemies are. But I think that NATO expansion was the right thing to do. I think the problem now is how NATO operates, whether people actually pay what they're supposed to. And it goes back to the initial question is we need partners, and NATO partners have to uh, pony up and really be part of it. 
For more information, visit wilsoncenter.org, where you can view the entire discussion between Madeleine Albright and Jane Harmon, as well as additional video from the recent alumni conference.